Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Eddie. I don't really need an introduction at this point. Joel did an awesome job. Um, I'm going to teach something that's very controversial and very against a lot of you guys' operations and the way you run your businesses right now. So luckily, I had the chance to talk to a bunch of you guys yesterday. We got to kind of figure out a bunch of the problems that a lot of people are having in this room. And so I'm going to show you some stuff and statistical facts on how we grew our agency to where we're at. We're about 60 employees right now. And this entire year, I've run ads for seven days. Seven and a half, we'll call it eight days. This entire year, I've ran ads for eight days. And we've grown fast enough to hire 50 employees this year alone. So I'm gonna break down exactly why, exactly how. And at the end, I'm gonna open up for Q&As just so I can make sure I answer some other questions that you guys got. <clears throat> and at the end of this, I have two slides at the end that are not relevant at all to this presentation. But if you implement the two things that I have at the end of this presentation, it will change your business forever, whether you're in an agency, whether you're in whatever business that you operate in, those last two slides will change your business forever. So let's get started, Jazz. Cool, so here's the major problem that all of you guys have. Your agency depends on ads to grow and nobody knows who the fuck you are before seeing your ads and getting on a call. Can anyone relate? Raise your hands. Who gets on sales calls and you have to explain yourself, you have to introduce yourself, and you have to tell people who you are? Can you put your hands up? It's all of you, don't lie to me. Put your hands up. Cool. I want you to really, really, really think about this question. I asked a lot of people this yesterday and no one had a good answer. How much of the stuff you do in your agency is actually permanent? Example, someone in your agency coming to you and asking you a question, hey boss, I'm stuck on this, how do I overcome this? And you verbalizing an answer to them is not permanent. You running an ad and spending money on Facebook and paying another platform to get views is not permanent. The second you turn it off, the second you stop spending money, you no longer exist. Are we on the same page here? Yes, just say yes. yes. Uh, awesome, great. So here's the three problems that we are gonna talk about today. Number one, your rewards end as soon as you stop working right now. There's nothing that is long-term, that's tangible, and that's permanent. And if you stop spending money or you stop spending time, your business will stop. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to stop that. Number two, attention is officially one of the most valuable currencies in the world. It is appreciating faster than anything else, including cryptocurrency and all these other crazy things that you're investing in. I'm gonna show you statistically in front of your eyes on a graph why I'm right on that. Number three, you still have to introduce yourself to people that are getting on sales calls because they don't know who you are. I get on a sales call, I don't even have to sell someone. They've consumed dozens of hours of our content. They're eight figure business owners and they just wanna work with us. They just wanna swipe their card. They don't even care what the price is. And that's the difference and that's why we grow so fast because I don't need to sit here explaining myself. My sales guy doesn't even need to sell the company. He just needs to get on and take a credit card every time. <laughs> Let's compare two sources of traffic, paid versus organic, okay? Paid, like I said, it only works if you're spending money. As soon as that button goes off, as soon as your credit card gets maxed out, as soon as it's not profitable, you turn them off. It doesn't work for you anymore, okay? If it does too well, you have to turn it off. That's why I run ads seven days this entire year. They did too well, we had too many leads, we had too many people coming in. I had to pause it, I can't intake that many people at the same time. So while it is an advantage to control your deal flow, to control the scale that you grow at, it is also a disadvantage because if it's too good, you turn it off, and if it's too bad, you turn it off. It has to be right in that sweet spot in the middle. Nobody can search for it. Nobody's gonna go right now, search for your agency name, and an ad is gonna pop up. It's just not gonna happen, okay? You have to appear in front of them. It's super unpredictable, we can all agree on that. I've seen it in the group. You have months, your ads are smashing, and you have months, your credit card company is calling you to pay the bill. So, pros. Like I said, obviously you can help scale as fast as you can, and don't get me wrong, we've used ads for certain departments in our business because that's the fastest way to scale. And a lot of you guys have a really good benefit by being able to run ads, and the fact that you get instant gratification. You run ads, you scale as fast as you want. I can run an ad right now, I can spend $10,000, and I know I'm gonna make that money back. And that's the instant gratification of ads, that's the control that you have, and that is why we're all so addicted 
to the nice little blue button on Facebook when the ads turn on. Now let's compare organic. Organic will always be there, okay? If I post a video on YouTube right now, it could only get 500 views, but at the end of the year I could check again and that video has 10,000 views. People can search it, people will always be able to find it, and before anyone gets on a sales call with me, they're likely consuming all this content. Even if they haven't, if I run an ad right now and someone opts in, they know my company name, they know my name, they're gonna do their research if they're any sort of intellectual who cares about getting on a sales call. They're gonna start consuming my content, they're gonna watch my YouTube, they're gonna go to our Instagram, they're gonna listen to our podcast, and by the time they actually get on the call, even if they've never heard of me before the ad, they are already sold on everything that we are doing. It's also searchable forever. I rank for some of the, some of my biggest clients, I am the first ranked YouTube video searching for them. Imagine multi eight figure companies, someone types their name in YouTube and my company is the first one that comes up because it's a behind the scenes footage of how we did something for their business, okay? So that's the power of the searchability here. With ads, you cannot search, guys. You need to understand that. Back to my main point, if there's anything you're gonna take away from what I'm talking about, permanency, okay? Ads are never permanent. They will always, they will never be permanent, no matter how you look at it. Organic will always be permanent. And so you need to find those platforms that are searchable, okay? Compounding returns, I already talked about this. You're gonna do it once, you're never gonna spend another dollar on it, you're just gonna leave it there, and then people are gonna keep viewing it, you're gonna keep getting customers over time, you're gonna keep gaining credibility, okay? I can guarantee you, the people you look up to the most, and that influence you guys the most in this room, are the people who create the most content. I want you to like really sit back and reflect. It's not the richest guys in the world. It's the people who create the most content that helps you guys out. It's the, it's the business people that are right at that stage below Elon Musk, below Jeff Bezos, and above you guys. And they're the ones that push out the most content and they're the ones that you guys look up to the most. They're the ones that you would see somewhere and you would wanna go talk to them and take a photo. And that is the power of organic. Most of these people, you've probably never seen an ad from them. You follow their pages, you obsess over their content, you take notes when they talk, and that's all organic. You don't directly pay per lead, big plus. Downside, really big downside, which is why most of you don't even make content. It takes too much time and money to see any results. You have to hire a video guy, you have to hire editors, you have to spend months of planning, months of creating content before you even get a single dollar back, okay? And like I said, I'm still gonna show you why it's still worth it because your money's depreciating so fast that it makes more sense to spend it on making permanent assets like this. I want you to think of it as like digital real estate, okay? And I'm gonna show you why. It takes too much time and you can't skip that. With ads, I can skip time with money. I can spend $10,000 today, like I said, and I can get enough leads for the next few months. With content, that's not the case. I have to sit there, I have to put out the content, I have to make sure the keywords are set up, I have to make sure I'm doing it on all the platforms, I have to wait for people to finally see it, and then see enough of it, and then eventually come back, and I get it, and I get it, and I get it, but that is the advantage that you actually have, because everyone is thinking the same way that you are. Fuck, content's really hard, it's gonna take too much time, it's gonna take too much money, I don't wanna do that. And so that's actually the advantage you have. Everyone in this room has probably run a paid ad. Everyone in here knows how to run paid ads. They can get in the ads manager. I can right now, before the end of my speech, have an ad live and probably have leads coming in. But that is not an advantage because every single one of you can do the same thing. The advantage is how much content can you get someone to consume before getting on a sales call with you, okay? So, very, 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 very simple way to maximize your content is right here on this chart. It's not overcomplicated. I want you to think like this. I want you to think long form content, cut down into short form content, okay? You don't need a fancy podcast studio like we have, you don't need an amazing uh, sets, and you don't need really nice cameras to start this, okay? A lot of you guys are already providing major value talking to either the clients that you have, the teams that you have, whatever it is, internal, it doesn't need to be external, you're already providing major value. All I'm asking you to do is to record that value that you have, let's call it a YouTube video, a 10 minute Zoom call with your team discussing something really cool that you guys did, 
can be broken down into multiple videos on TikTok, on Instagram, another video on YouTube, another video on Facebook, and same for podcasts. I love podcasts so much because you can get on a call with someone, you can shoot the shit for two hours, and you can have 30 pieces of micro content that you run across each platform. And if, if you go to our YouTube channel as an example, it's formedia.marketing, you'll see we have long form clips, podcast videos, two hours. Then we have something right under it, we have 10 minute clips. Then we have like one and two minute clips, okay? And all these things come from the same video. Right now I can open up my Google Drive, I can pull up 50 posts that I can post on Instagram, TikTok, whatever I want because I did the same things I was doing every day. I talked to my team, I did a podcast here and there and people took that content and edited it into micro content. I think the misconception is you have to go out of your way to shoot content. The misconception everyone has is like, I have to plan it, I have to sit down, I have to do it, I have to be very intentional with it. That is not the case and that is why it's such a big barrier of entry. I need you guys to start thinking, do the same thing that you're doing, just hit the record button. That is it. Do not change anything that you're doing, do not plan the content that you have to start. All I want you to think is record what you're doing, give it to an editor, and have them cut it up. And if you want editors, Omir, he's my guy. He connects me with uh, some pretty good editors in South America, so he's the plug. But does, it, does this make sense to everyone? Yes, no? Yes. Are you gonna do this? Yes. I like you a lot, I can I already know, tell. This is so relevant because I just hired an executive producer last week. This is what I've been building for 10 years to build up to, and I have a video crew, but we just not making fucking content. That's it. I used to make lots of fucking content every day, and then I got out of that because it wasn't making enough money. And then, but now like we have this plan and it's actually a part of how we're gonna build books. So we're gonna build content engines and people are gonna hire us to bring our content crews to actually film their books on camera. And so we're gonna do the long form and then we're gonna make all the micro content for our clients. And do it for yourself too. Exactly, we're gonna start with ourselves. That's the problem, a lot of people do it for their clients and don't do it for themselves. Exactly, exactly. Right, so I love that shit. Any questions here before I move on? Awesome. Another thing, um, remember, my entire topic is permanent stuff, okay? It's gonna be very basic, you're gonna look at it. If you actually implement what I'm telling you, it will change your life a year from now, you will 10X your company, I promise you. Google reviews. Who here actually has a Google location for their business and actually has more than five Google reviews? Keep your hand up. One, two, are you partners? No, three, four, five, six, you guys have more than five? Who has more than 20? Keep your hands up. More than 50? Look at the room. Zero. You guys are agency owners. You're some of the most elite agency owners in the United States, and some of you from outside the United States. Zero of you guys can go toe to toe with me right now. Because I have 81 five star reviews from very credible business owners. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk up and read these. No, go back. Who gets on a call, sales call? Can I see current people that you work with? Can I talk to someone that, that works with your agency? Put your hands up. Who, who gets these objections on calls? Sorry, I missed that. Can, I get a, can I talk to a referral? Can I, oh, yeah, yeah. Can I hear from people who work with you? Okay, all of you guys hear this. I don't let anyone talk to anyone. I'm like, open up our Google, search us up, and read our reviews. I'll be honest, I've hired a lot of companies in the space, but I haven't experienced one with this intimate and personal touch. Most companies give you broad instructions, feedback, that may have worked for the masses, but Eddie and his team literally injected themselves into my business, took the time to learn the ins and outs, and actually studying the business he was then able to give swift and strategic steps to grow, can't speak highly enough about them, has changed my mind about working with others in this space, thanks guys. Keeps going and going, I'm not gonna read these, they just get more intense and more intense. Here's the key, when you ask a client for a video review, they're nervous, they don't wanna do it, you have to hunt them down, it seems like they're doing you a favor. When people use their thumbs to type things, they will type 10x what they will say on a video. They will go much more in depth about it. They will dig into all the things that has made them feel amazing from your business, whereas on a video they will keep it surface level. We all have those really good reviews, right? That one person that just smashes it on the camera, that's their review that rocks. But everyone, whether they're 80, whether they're 20, whether they're 50, whether they suck at, whether they have a lisp, it doesn't matter, everyone types. And they will type the best reviews for you. 
And the coolest part, they don't go on your website. They don't go somewhere where people think you can fake them. They are on Google. I can go toe to toe with anyone in this room because of this right here. I want you guys to really take this seriously. If you don't have a business location, set up a PO box, set up the address, get verified on Google, and start pushing every time you get anything good. My team tells me, dude, this guy just, he, he killed it this month, this was his best month, whatever. I'm like, cool, review now, get a review. Send them the link, it's super easy. You just send them a link, they click it once, it's already five stars, they start typing, and you have a permanent, again, permanent review on Google, a verified source that we all know you can barely even delete reviews from Google. It's like an impossible process. So the fact that I have 81 five stars of people writing shit like this, makes it impossible for someone to say no to me, even if I'm charging three times what other people are charging. Can anyone guess what this is a chart of? You can just scream them out loud. COVID, no. Attention span, no. Value of the US dollar over time. Okay, I'm not gonna spoil the, the crypto presentation today, but you, you kinda get the point, right? We're on the same page. Cool, next slide. This is the amount of consumable content available online over time. Between Netflix, between YouTube, between Facebook, Instagram, between any source that you can consume video or photo or written content, this is what it looks like. There's more people in the world, there's more content being made, it is an exponential graph that will never ever go down if you guys know math, the scope of the slope will always be exponentially rising, okay? This is just a fact, I don't care if you argue with this. I couldn't find an actual stat of like how many hours of content are online every day added, but like I think on YouTube alone, there's like, yeah, right? Billions of hours every like, I don't know, X amount of time added. That's just YouTube, okay? So this is kind of a perspective. Chart number two. Hours to consume content daily as a person. Average person spends four hours on the internet. I gave this chart five to be generous. This will not change, okay? Next chart. This is the point I'm trying to make here. If the supply of content is always going up exponentially and the hours that someone has to consume the content does not change, doesn't that make your content marginally more valuable every single day. Think about it. The supply is getting bigger. The competition is getting harder. People don't have more hours. They have the same. They have to now choose, what am I gonna commit my attention to? And therefore, the value of the minutes spent of people consuming your content is exponential. Nothing compares to it. There's four hours, 240 minutes every day that they can consume content in general online. One Netflix episode knocks it down to 180. That's all it takes. And so when someone watches my content for two hours on a podcast, I'm taking 50% of their daily consumption of time that they're committing to outside their daily activities. I own real estate in that person's head. I don't care what anyone says. And so over time, the content that you're making is becoming more and more and more valuable as long as you can keep people's attention. All right, this is what most of your businesses look like. I'm off the content topic, we're done with that, cool? Everyone get the point? I swear, if I don't see you guys posting more content, I'm gonna be so pissed off. <laughs> this is like, you don't understand how valuable this is, it's changed our company. You make profits, you put them back in ads, and you try to make more profits. That's what most of your businesses look like. From me talking to you guys, I know everyone has so many different businesses, but this is the general overview of what it looks like. Next slide. This is what I want it to start looking like, okay? I want you to make money, save up money. A lot of you guys have some pretty good cash reserves. I want you to hire content people on your team and invest in the content. Remember, two things. The content will eventually bring you money. That is the indirect return that you will receive over time the one that takes a little bit of patience, but the direct return is when you're running ads and your organic content is gas, people will, 
People will click on your profile, they will do the research on you before they get on a sales call, and they will automatically assume you are better than the other guys because your organic content is dope. It's very simple. People don't just come through an ad, fill out a form, and like, fuck it, I'm getting on this call with Omir on Tuesday. Well, I wonder who this guy is. They'll, they'll dig. They'll dig for media marketing, they'll start looking, they'll try to find what pops up on Google, what are you on LinkedIn, they'll start looking at these things, guys. And so if your organic content is dope, you're gonna spend money on ads, you're gonna have better organic content, and this is an important key in the internet marketing space. Perception is reality, okay? A lot of you guys can look 10 times bigger than what you are right now, just from the content that you put out. It doesn't matter. No one gets on a sales call and says, how much money is your agency making? No one does that shit, okay? But if you have dope content, they can make assumptions and they can already understand how successful of a company that you have and that directly correlates to their confidence with working with you. Anyone goes to our Instagram right now as a client, they'll look at it and be like, these guys know their shit. Alex or Mosey, we do his marketing for his supplements, had a 45 minute call with me after we delivered his first round of content and all he said was, I just watched the videos and I knew you guys knew your shit. Alex or Mosey, this is like the pinnacle of the pinnacle of the pinnacle of a client that you can get. Can you imagine what everyone way underneath Alex or Mosey that I'm trying to get as a client is thinking? If Alex or Mosey with all the marketing team, 50 employees, tens of millions of dollars every year, thinks like that, what is someone who is just trying to run their company with their wife and some a few employees thinking about your pages. I want you guys to like really start thinking about that. Next thing you need to invest in is talent. I see a lot of people here trying to do things the leanest way possible, which is totally cool at the beginning. Once you have cash reserves, and I'm gonna show you our exact onboarding process, how we interview people, so you guys can find talent as well, you need to start investing in talent. It's the smartest people that will carry your business. And if you ever want to remove yourself fully from your business, you need smart people in there to be able to handle that shit. Does that make sense? Cool, next slide. All right, <clears throat> this, is, this is what an agency actually looks like, okay? I think the confusion, I'm scared to walk close. The confusion is a lot of people think it's just acquisition of clients, okay? All of us are focused on how can I acquire more clients and how can I onboard them better? And that's all we're thinking about. The reality is it's also acquisition of talent. Okay, I was talking, you right? You too, last night? This is a never ending acquisition game. Once you crack acquisition of clients, it doesn't end there. Now you need to start cracking acquisition of talent. You need to understand how to get the best people. People that will fight for your business, okay? People when there's down months, they don't care, they know they're working towards something a lot bigger with your company, okay? So step one, obviously acquisition of clients, onboarding of clients, most of you guys get that. Tightening operations, that's like a 10 day course. You guys kind of already working on that through the program. Last things, acquisition of talent and onboarding talent. This has been the biggest game changer for us outside of content this year because we efficiently intake employees and from day one, anyone that works on our team knows everything about our company, they know everything about how our Monday boards work, they know everything about how our Slack channels work. I don't even know the person's name and just because we filled out an onboarding form, they know everything they need to. So my team members, let me, let me put it this way, the two, Biggest costs to your business that you don't see on a P&L statement. I don't care if you have a CFO, no matter what you do, the two biggest costs you have are people that get hired that are not efficient, okay? That's like a month, two months of a lot of wasted hours that you're paying for because they don't know how everything runs. And two, meetings. Because if you really think about it, I take 10 people, I put them in a one hour meeting and they each get paid 40 bucks an hour on average, that's $400. That $400 is not gonna show up anywhere on my P&L statements, my CFO is not gonna report on that $400 that was lost, but the more efficient you can make time, the more profit you will have as a company because everyone will be more efficient, you'll be able to handle a lot more, you'll be able to move the needle forward. Does that make sense? Okay, here's our interview process, it's very simple, it's very short. 
I don't recommend you do what I do, but I go through all the applications myself. That is the first round of the process because I find it the best point to filter as a CEO, okay? For content people, I've gone through 300 applications before I found the one that I wanted. What I'll do, I'll put an Indeed job posting example. This is the job description, whatever. And on Indeed, here's an important point. A lot of you guys are just putting a job posting. Job description, here's what we need, here's the salary, here's the hours. Now, that's the second half for me. The first half is all about the company. This is what four media marketing is. Here's how long we've been in business. Here's how our culture is. If you don't have these four qualities, don't even bother applying. I go deep into the company, into the culture, into the person that I want. Before I even talk about skills, before I even talk about responsibilities, I don't even give a shit about that yet. I want people to believe in the business before they even apply. I'll read through the applications. Over time, you guys will get like HR people. You can have other people in the business read the applications. I read through just because I've been doing this for so long. I know like what actually is experience and what isn't. A lot of people will perceive some things like, oh, this guy used MailChimp and he's really good at email and I can kind of like read through it more than other people. I'll take, let's say 15 candidates. I'll send them to our department heads. So let's use email as an example. Email marketing department. Natalia is our head. She's gonna interview these 15, these 15 people. So she sets up a 15 minute interview with all our candidates. And the objective of this is to find out if they actually have a good culture fit. Remember, everyone can flex how good they are at ads and all these other things. Everyone, everyone can yap. For now, I just wanna know, are you the kind of person I wanna work with? Are they culture fit? And go over job related skills in depth and better understand what they actually did. When people just put stuff on their resume, I wanna dig, I wanna figure out how much you actually know. Can you talk the lingo? Can you back up all these things that you're saying on your resume? Does that make sense? Yes? yes. Awesome. So let's assume 15 people, 10 make it through. Next step is homework, okay? This is a must. Again, this is permanent. You make it once and you forever give it to every single person applying to your business, okay? Everything is about permanency. You are building a business. You're not running a business. There's a big difference. You are building a business. We all use that word. We throw it around. But which one of you guys are actually building on top of what you already have? You can't build if nothing is permanent. Every day you're going and you're setting a foundation again. And you're playing with the dirt. What you need to do is, is build things, keep them permanent, whether it's on a drive, whether it's on a Monday board, wherever it is, it needs to be permanent, okay? So we assign very detailed homework. I'm gonna show you exactly what it is next slide. Purpose, I wanna determine how fast they are at what they do. This is a big thing that we actually don't, in general, business owners, we don't measure in the interview process. We just measure how good someone is at something. But I wanna know how fast you are at the same time, okay? If it takes someone 10 hours to write an email and someone else one hour to write an email, I wanna know that before I hire them. So how is their speed? How is their quality? And how is their Zero mistake detail. That is a very key. If someone reads the assignment I'm about to show you and makes a mistake, not based on aesthetics, just strictly based on instructions, I will not hire them. If before they even start, they can't even read the fucking paragraph about what they need to do, it's only gonna go downhill from there. So let's go to the next slide. If you are an agency owner, I have the event of the year ready to go for you here in January, every single year in Atlanta, Georgia. It's Agency Founders, where we bring together the top seven figure a month agency owners to come speak to you and share the strategies that they're doing over the past 12 months and the next 12 months to keep growing their business. This is information that you're not gonna get anywhere outside of this room. These are usually people that don't even post online that much because the information is so valuable and they do not wanna share it. But we peel back the curtains on our businesses, we show the numbers, we show exactly how we're getting our clients, we show the operations, and we show everything in between at Agency Founders. This is our third year coming up here in 2024, and we do it every January. So based on when you're listening to this, um, it's either happening soon or it just happened and you're gonna have to to wait for the next one. But in both cases, I want you to go to theagencyfounders.com. Link is below the video in the description. Go ahead, learn more about it. And if you're in the agency space and you're serious 
about making more money, getting past the mark that you're at, whether it's going to six figures a month, whether it's going to seven figures a month, this is the most valuable room, the most valuable network, and the most valuable information in the agency space. I absolutely guarantee it without a shadow of a doubt in my mind. The feedback that we get every year is that that is the case every single time, whether people are making five figures a month, six figures a month, or even seven figures a month. And I expect to see you there if you're serious about taking this agency journey to the next level. So go ahead, click the link below at theagencyfounders.com, learn more, fill out the application and apply. Uh, and hopefully I see you in the seats. And if I do, please come by, say, hey, me and all the speakers are going to be accessible throughout the two, three days there. Uh, and I want you to leave there absolutely transforming your life and taking a different direction, not just showing up, taking notes and not doing anything with it. So I'll see you in January in Atlanta, Agency Founders. All right. So... I'm kind of tired. Do you want to read this? <clears throat> oh, yeah. I need glasses. <laughs> what do you mean? You want to read this thing? Read all, right, all, right, all, right, all right. Your assignment will be to create three email campaigns for the store Veg Nutrition. Choose a product on the website for the first two. And for the final email, it is a store wide event. Create the following campaigns and cl uh, Clavio. Clavio. Create a product informational email explaining the benefits of the product and why they should use it. Create a social proof email utilizing reviews from the website to convince a customer. And and give reassurance on why they should use the product. Create an email announcing an upcoming 24-hour summer flash sale. The flash sale will be 30% off with a minimum purchase of $50 discount code SUMMER30. Name the product campaign using the format your name, assignment title, product. In this folder, you will find assets for the products as well as branding assets. What are we looking for? Clean email optimized for mobile. Be sure that your email looks good in dark mode too. Compiling subject and preview lines, copy and CTAs. Ensure UTM parameters are as follows. Source, for media, medium, email, cam, uh, <clears throat> medium, email, campaign, email subject. When you're done, please send a preview of the email to Cla from Clavio to Matt Deitch. Uh, De Am I getting that right? Yeah, my diet check for media marketing and, and then blah, blah, blah. I think this is just the little extra stuff right there. All right. Can we give Jeremy a massive <laughs> round of applause? Cool. So let me go over some things on this that are very important. So this is an email assignment specifically, right? So let me just document a few things. You know, like I said, everyone can yap on interviews. Um, and they can yap on resumes, but they can't yap on actual homework, okay? So, a couple important details. I give them a discount code, okay? Because I want to know if they know how to make and use a discount code, okay? I tell them to put the person's name in the subject line because I want to know if they can dynamically put the first name of an email recipient in the subject line. Does that make sense? Like, I'm not giving them just a basic assignment. Then, I give them UTM parameters, okay? You can see at the bottom, source, medium, campaign. If you run ads, you should know what these are. If you don't, you should really look into them. Um, but I tell them to do these. So th to do this, they have to go into the settings of the email, not on the main page, and then go in and insert these things. So when I'm evaluating their assignment, I can make sure that this person went down the list and checked every box. And we tell them, the moment you open the email with the assignment is the moment your timer starts. So don't open it until you're ready to start working. So they'll open the email and we'll evaluate the time it took from the time they opened the email to read the instructions, to go through all the content folders, to do the assignment and how accurate the assignment was. And again, if they are 99% accurate on the assignment, they do not get the job. Very simple, point blank. And a lot of the times in our businesses, there's something called seat pressure that a lot of us don't do. We don't put seat pressure on our team. I was just talking about this uh, with a few people yesterday. And the problem is we, how do I say it? We make our team feel like they are untouchable in a way, in a weird way. Like their job security is always there. Even with a few mistakes here and there, like it's all good, we'll figure it out, we'll move on. And what happens when you put seat pressure, meaning you can show people that you can hire other talented people quickly, you do that. You're not necessarily saying, hey, you're gonna lose your job, but bringing in other people that are talented as well and setting a different standard and a different bar and a different level of following instructions creates that seat pressure on the person that's already in the business 
And just like that, no matter how many talks I give, no matter what I do, nothing works better than hiring someone else that does the same job that the person does that does it better to increase the productivity of the person who was originally there and make them feel like I'm not untouchable in this business. And it's very important to have. And like I have the same conversations with my business partner. I say, dude, listen, like you need to step up here, you need to step up there. We're very transparent with each other. I obviously don't put seat pressure on my partner, but I put that verbal pressure on him as well. So same applies for your team. Like all day you can give people talks, you can do all these things, but at the end of the day, if there is no seat pressure, there is no fear of losing a job or there's no fear on someone outperforming them to get that job, they will drag their feet and over time it will just get worse and worse and worse because their comfort levels get higher and higher and higher. Cool. Next, last part of the interview process is an interview with me. So let's just say 10 candidates did the assignment, three passed. I take on those three and I have 20 minute calls with them. This is a very negotiation based call. I already know that they're worth hiring. My team has approved them. I don't need to ask them all these other questions again. I wanna find out what's their long term purpose? What do they wanna make in a year? five years, do they wanna use this as a temporary stop, go start their own thing? I need to know all these details so we're on the same page. I negotiate their pay structure. As a CEO, there's a quote uh, my friend Billy told me. As a CEO, your job is to care about everyone else in the company and everyone else's job is to care about themselves. Okay, very important note. Once someone is on your team, your job is to make sure they're good. Before they are on your team, in this interview process, your job is to make the company the most money with the least amount of money spent, period, point blank. I negotiate all my pay structures with everyone I bring on. I set up 60, 90 day reduced pay trial periods if, if some people don't, if they have the skill set but they don't know that job very well, like they're talented, they're you know, organize all these things. I make them earn their way in. And it's really cool. The people that actually are willing to do that are by far the best people we have in the company. They have no ego coming in. I kill their ego right out the gate. Hey, you have to take a reduced pay for 60 days and come work for these people even if I'm really smart. I'm already not the superior in the situation. And so it gives my team that are bringing them in a bigger level of respect and it shows me that this person is willing to make an upfront sacrifice for a long-term win. I um, really, really, really make them believe the company, make them believe in the vision, and I help them understand where we're actually going. That is the most important part. I don't want anyone on my team that is just there for a job. I want someone on my team who believes in the people, in the company, where we are going, and the opportunity that that presents to them. And that is a very important thing. Everyone that I actually hire off these calls is all in, like Joel says. They are all in on our business. They are all in on their role. They work nights sometimes, they work weekends sometimes. It doesn't matter because we're all going the same place and sometimes it's gonna take a little bit extra pull from a few other people in order to get there and they understand that right out the gate. So culture, culture, culture is one of the most important things when it comes to acquisition and talent that a lot of people really sleep on. Cool, so here's how we onboard an employee. Long story short, I'm not gonna go through everything, but this is kind of important. Again, we all know how to onboard our clients. That's what we focus on. We have a form, we have zaps, we have all these things. Now, intaking employees is just as important, if not more. It's actually a bigger sunken cost, like I was telling you guys. So, first thing we do, uh, we use Google Sites because it's free, but we, we basically made a pretty cool little website that you can only log in if you have a Form Media email. So you go to this link and it only lets you in if you're logged in through at formedia.marketing. So we'll make the person's email, then we'll say, hey, here's a website, watch all the videos on the website before you start, based on your department. So they click email team, they'll click email team, and there'll be videos there to watch. So we'll teach them how to use a Google Calendar. That's a 20 minute video. Like, most people actually don't know how the fuck to use a Google Calendar before they work for like an agency, okay? How, how we use Monday, here's how our Monday board works. How we use Slack, here's how Slack works. Here is the company, here's how it's structured, here's what we're doing, here's where you will belong, here's what your team does, here's how you operate, here's when your meetings are every day, here's how to do this, here's how to do that, and before they even walk into our door day one, they know everything about the company, they know who does what, they know what the purpose is, they know how we use Monday, they know how you use Slack, they know every little bit about the business that they need to know, and at this point, they are at the highest point of belief. They've been sold by you on an interview, 
they're onboarding and now they're watching videos, meeting the team, understanding the purpose of the business. And just like that, you need to understand perception is reality. From the gate, just like when you onboard a client and your organized onboarding gives them a much better experience and confidence in you, same will go for a team member. Okay, and when they start and you have all these things already out for them and they're learning and they're absorbing and it's all organized, their confidence in your business goes up dramatically and the bar that they set for themselves of how they need to perform goes up dramatically because lack of organization will give them an excuse to also have a lack of organization. If you are organized out the gate, every dot is, every I is dotted, T is crossed, whatever the fuck people say, right out the gate, people will feel that and they will have the same um, level of um, discipline and organization that you have presented them with. You set the bar out the gate. Number two, we have a hiring onboarding form, just like you would for a client. Every time we hire someone, we put their info in this form. That form then sends a message to every single person based on the department that person is in. So I hire the form, I fill out the form, email department, blah, blah, blah. It pings the email department. This person is starting on this date. This is the position that they have. Here's how we've negotiated their salary. X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Everyone that needs to know knows in the company about someone being hired every single time. And step three, permanency, right? Permanency, permanency, permanency. I was showing a few people our Monday boards yesterday. Every single Monday board in the company, every single one, we have hundreds. Every single one has a full blown description on how to use it, how to assign things, who to assign what on the board based on what the task is, how to use the board, and after all that description, there's a Loom video in case you still don't get it. Click the Loom video and understand how to use the board. Over time, as you hire people, people will start creating their own ways that they think things should be done. And so, I'll go, example, as you start expanding departments, I'll jump, uh, an email person will jump onto a copywriting board and assign something. And they'll assign it the way that they think it should be assigned. And what happens over time is they're being assigned things in 10 different ways. And so now this person has to understand how each person's assigning them things, and it creates a shit show across the board. So from the beginning, save you guys months of mistakes, make permanent descriptions and loom videos on every single Monday board in your business, every single Asana board, every single ClickUp board, whatever you guys use, make those because you wanna be able to insert someone into your business day one, never talk to them, never spend an ounce of your time, they know how to use everything in the company without a single question being asked, okay? The problem is, a lot of us, if not everyone in this room, are still spending our valuable time onboarding new employees, teaching them things, answering questions, figuring out the mistakes that they're making, finding new problems and helping them resolve them. We were just talking yesterday about this. They're like, man, every time I, every time I bring someone on, I gotta like spend weeks teaching them stuff and then like, then they still don't know some things and then I gotta figure it out for them and I gotta tell them the answer. If you follow an actual onboarding process for your team, you will save yourself 30, 40 hours every single time you bring someone on board, guaranteed. How much are those 30, 40 hours worth to you guys? Like so much money. And all you have to do is just do it once, type it in on a Google Doc, and put it up there permanently. Very simple. Make sense? Yes. Make sense? Yes. Cool. Okay, so a couple action steps I want you guys to take away from today. And then I'm gonna show you the last two slides which are my little juicy secrets. Make more content, get more Google reviews, and acquire better talent. These are the three things that will overnight change your business if you leave this conference and you start implementing them right at the gate. I promise you, I guarantee it. I've done it over and over. We have multiple agencies under our umbrella at this point. They all operate the same way. And these are the three things that if you do this week, you will start seeing the results very quickly. I don't wanna sell you anything, I just want you guys to follow me. So do me a favor, pull out your phones, follow me if I provided you any value. And then I'm going to show you the last two slides, so. <laughs> 30 seconds, follow me. And then I'll show you. IG, IG. IG and uh, 4 Media Marketing on YouTube if you want some entertainment. I, by show of hands, who has a primarily remote team? Keep your hands up, everyone. Everyone? You don't have a remote team? No? No, you're on the team, you're on rise. <laughs>
All right, cool. I'm gonna show you a little secret that we've done. Transformed our entire business. Next slide. It's very hard when you can't see someone to understand what they're actually doing on a day-to-day, -day, okay? It also is very hard to understand. As business owners, we're usually one of the most talented people in our company, okay? You're probably like one of the best people at ads or one of the best people at content. Whatever you're good at, you're one of the best people at it. Best at sales, whatever it is. You're the best at something in your business, that's why you own it. The problem is we create the same expectations of our team that we create from ourselves. Example, I can make an email, I can type an entire email copy in 10 minutes. My team thinks it takes 40. They have to research, they have to think, they have to get creative. They're not me and I'm not them. And so it took me some time to realize that. So what we did on Monday, and you can make this, it's called a dashboard if you have Monday. So there's boards, which all of you use, and then there's dashboards, which is just data presentation. You can make one that's a workload dashboard. And so you can see these circles. The darker the circle, the more workload that person has that day or that week, whatever we're measuring by. So this is a weekly view. The daily view looks the same, it's just days instead of weeks. And so we know when someone is overworked and we've assigned them too much so that we avoid that. Because the worst thing that can happen in your business is people not getting things done. Not because they're not getting them done, but because it kills the momentum of winning. Okay, when you get shit done at the end of the day, when you check that last box, you feel like you won. And the next day you wanna win again, and you wanna win again, and you wanna win again. But if every day, you always end the day and there's three, four things that you never got to, and then another three, four things that you never got to, it creates this like paralysis for people because now they're at a point where they're so overwhelmed with so many things, they don't know what to start with. Is it the stuff that's due today? Is it the stuff that was due three days ago? Where do I start and what do I prioritize at this point? And so what we've done is we've created basically a number of how many certain tasks each person can handle on a daily basis. And so those circles allow us to know from an overview, everyone in the company, I can keep scrolling down, I can see what workload that person is assigned, on what days. And so now our managers know when to make things do for people based on their workload. Does this make sense? This is very important. Up till this point, we're just assigning shit. Hey, this is for uh, Isaac. Hey, this is for Joel. Hey, Sergio, you gotta get this done. Eddie, you gotta get this done. This is due this day. And we have no idea because what's happening is a lot of other people are assigning the same people different things as well. So we don't understand that person's workload. But from one click, I can understand everyone's workload in the entire business based on the tasks that are assigned in Monday, which is where everything should be. Does this make sense? Cool, next thing. Discord, has anyone ever used Discord? Okay. If you do not use Discord in your company, you suck right now. I promise you. All of you guys raise your hand for remote teams. How, how can you manage them? Where is the office? Where, where, where can you reach everyone at an instant? Right now, I can open up my phone. I showed some guys yesterday at midnight. I had my team working. They were still checked in on Discord. I jumped in and talked to them. This was me this morning at 9.02 a.m. at Sergio's house. I just took a screenshot just so you guys can see it. Without, without even doing anything, I can hover over I can scroll up and down. Each person has their own office space, and then each department has multiple meeting rooms. And so, I, don't, I can't like log in and show you, but like, basically, I can scroll up. You can see like different people are in here. And anytime someone's live, I can see that without jumping in or letting them know I'm seeing it. So, without doing anything, I can just turn on Discord, not be inside of it, scroll up and go through every meeting that's happening, float over the live button with my mouse, and it'll show me the screen share that's happening, and I'll know what the team is talking about. So at 9.02 a.m., I knew my e-com account manager had all the media buyers in the room, and he was sharing his screen of all the tasks, back to that thing I just showed you, all the tasks that need to get done today, and all the things that were assigned yesterday. Because we have a rule, the very important rule, if you all implement it, it will help your team a lot. Never same day, period, it's our rule. If a client wants something, unless it's an absolute emergency, never same day. Because what happens is, over time, you start getting things. You say, hey bro, do this. Hey, client wants this, do this. Hey, client does this, do this. And then at the end of the day, they never actually got the stuff done that they need to get done because you gave them so many things. So we have a rule, never same day. So we dump all our tasks into one board and then next day in the morning, they review all the tasks that were dumped yesterday on that board so that we make sure we're on the same page. Thank you, everyone. I hope I brought you some value. Appreciate it. Thank you.